Hello there and welcome to episode 17 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six version 65. So for today we got a lot of little things up ahead of us. So the main topics for today I want to go into the, the finer things of your city cultivation. That means I want to get towards um, religious upgrades, towards grooming and all those uh, higher tech things that require dirty rotten amounts of tech points to get going. But when it comes down to religion and proper burial and those things, these technologies are well worth the price. At the same time, we're going to prepare our military conquest, as this will just need a little bit more time, and I felt like these were cool things to fill the time in between. We're going to refurnish our training ground today, as I want to put up my my own military a little bit more thoroughly. So these places give you more places, uh, to, more spots to train your recruits on. We're also going to unlock here, what was it again, the better training, 500 research points, and the archery range. So this way we are now seeing also archers here uh, available. When it comes down to soldiering, I'm just going to go for a little bit of an intro here. You can check out what people are really good at or bad at. So we see that Ocratonians suck at using bows quite hard and the Dondorians suck even harder at doing so. So the bowyers are really not that important for us, but for the sake of completion of this series, I'm still doing it. So the bow range is not really much of a... Uh, uh, archery range is not much of a uh, really groundbreaking new concept or such, but, you know, I want to have the complete array of troops when we're uh, when we're doing the tutorial stuff later. So here we're just going to go for small scale thing. Ten people can train here. And between the episodes I took the liberty of preparing a new brewery because it has become apparent that our drink production is just not keeping up with the task. And I upgraded the tailor. So we're going to monitor whether or not the construction here, uh, the, the production here will withstand. The supply depots currently are not fully um, configured. I need to flick the switch here for these depots to pick up stuff which they will supply to the armies. But since we don't have any armies currently, I just don't want to supply any goods towards there as it would be just a dead end. So just as a couple of explanations in between, a bit of a completionist thing for the last uh, episode there. So we are going to go and pack up more recruits now into both buildings and we're going to rack up more humans and Dondorians as we want to proceed making our city larger and more successful. So we have reached the new rank of Dakori Ray, which makes our nobilities two slots bigger. It's really amazing as nobles are by now really, really powerful. So let's see. Master of textiles, master of refinery. Hell yeah, I'm in. This will yield us more income for wood, uh, for, for metal, and for drinks as well. Master of the Forge, so you can upgrade the metal smelter several times. I didn't know, actually. So, I am currently looking for something that would help me with clothing, but actually it seems... Ah, here, Master of Fashions. Yeah, let's put that up, too, as... This will increase the production of jewelry too, so we can pack up that task one day maybe as well. So currently I'm trying to get me a larger population of Dondorians, even if they are not the super ideal fit for this city. They are really necessary as crafters. So while all these things are producing, we're now waiting for that lab to be done, because the first thing that I want to introduce today is the uh, big burial um, technology, the tombs. Uh, we are lacking currently tech points for that, but not that much longer. At this point, we're going to build this lab, 
and yet another one, and then we're probably starting to upgrade. I haven't fully wrapped up my mind around that yet, but there's still a lot of ground to cover in this series, don't you worry. Okay, so the training uh, grounds here are seeing completion as well quite soon. Construction process 100%. There we go. So 10 people are now doing their soldiering there as well. We can now see that our troops are fully geared out. And here we now have the templates of our troops. This is just the basic troop setup. We're going to cover that in another episode. Just trying to prepare that it's going to get easier later to understand all the other dits and dats. Because I personally find the military system a little bit... Uh, more difficult to pick up, to put into friendly words. At the meantime, we are still seeing no real relief on the drinks or clothing front. That is, by the way, a pretty normal thing. I've had almost no cities ever that were capable of uh, fulfilling the need for drink and clothing way up until the mid-game, so don't feel weird about that if it's just something in your city happening as well. I mean, here, I got to admit to a uh, really large degree, I am also not really um, optimizing myself here well, as in we're just trying to do too many things at once, and therefore many of my industries are just not as powerful as they could be. But uh, the, it's just drink is just as popular as food for your people. That's just how you uh, could perceive it. It's something they don't need to survive, but they will almost drink as much as they'll eat. I, I, I keep feeling like, sadly, we don't have a readout here. If anybody's watching this who can change something about this, it would be awesome to have a consumption rate of drink as well. It would make everything so much easier to be planned. As right now, we, uh, well... We can only see how much we're producing, but I, I really have a hard time perceiving how much we would need to uh, produce for a entirely happy city. Anyways, that just as a side note. Ah, we're being extorted, so for now we're going to pay that because I want to have the um, combat system not just floating into, into my series just like that. All right, so we're upgrading that lab immediately. And I'm just not packing in all the workers immediately because I don't want to have such a heavy influx of people into my city all at once. We still are waiting for the um, extra orchard to kick into uh, production. Here it is. Oh, no, we're not. It's, uh, let's see, is that? Ah, we had a production already last year. I mean, food-wise, I don't need to be that angsty anymore. Our city is so rich that whatever food might be needed will be just easily imported. So that is an easy part, an easy fix for us here on that end. So, tombs. Tombs are really, really amazing. They are, they've become super costly, by the way. I, uh, in previous versions, we were able to build them much, much earlier. And by now, they cost gems and cut stone. So this is going to be the, the introduction into the world of uh, gemstone consumption. So let's pack up that tomb just like that. And we are going to go and make it 10 of 10. And we are going also to make it a grand building. This makes the costs of this place really go up like crazy. You can also just uh, go for a regular old stone building if you wanted to. But we're we're going to pack the, the big one here. So costs, of course, go down when the stability is back, on, uh, back in place. But here goes. So you want to have as many graves as you can in this place, of course. But there's always the problem that... The more graves you got, the more statues you need to pack in to have the proper respects. Statues come in different sizes, as you see there. And luckily they don't cost any gemstone. So at least that's something that we can here avoid. But as you see there, the statues also take up room in your building, so you need to be careful about that as well. So 
let's see. We can get ourselves something uh, working here. So I'll be reducing the total amount of graves on that end a little bit. And on that end a little bit. So you see there. Oh, the respect is not... Wait a sec. I'm confused. So larger statues, more respect. Goes without saying. Let's pack it up like that. As usual, I'm not really a good person for optimized builds here. <laughs> but that ain't my job. So, we need to import gemstone for that to work out. So, we're going to assign one crate for that. And let's see if I have an import station left for this task. Yes, we do. So, with the inf influx of gemstone, I'm going to import an entire crate of it. It's uh, really, really terribly costly, but... Ah, uh, well, it's a bullet we have to... Uh, we have to bite. We can now also build chambers. Like I said, currently your nobles work without, so I won't be building them as we're uh, already seeing enough strain on our on our economy as it is. So I don't want to put that extra on their shoulders. And as you see here also, the import of uh, gemstone just annihilated my entire treasury. That's how fast it can go. So, if in, in case you think you're just wealthy or something like that, just import start importing gemstone. You're uh, you're going to be poor in a minute. So, the plus side of all that is though that we now got the necessary resources to go into the real late game. Well, we are just lacking Cephalon, which is going to be the next um, loop to jump through. But uh, with the gemstone imports here, there is another thing that we need to cl pay close attention to. And that's the fact that we're currently not able to import as fast anymore as we were before. But we still have a net negative in production rate. That production rate was a little bit higher a minute ago. Mm. Well... Since the gemstone that we've just imported will be one-time investment because gemstone basically doesn't spoil at all it's okay though so our economy will recover but just wanted to showcase how brutal the costs of gemstone can be and now we're slowly scraping by with the costs of the uh, of the of a cut stone so grand buildings are stupidly costly as you see here the city has somewhat of uh, of uh, has sort of a progression already behind itself. This is no no rookie city. It is a mediocre city, of course, because it is inefficient at, at many points. But just the construction of one tomb with cut stone is overburdening my industry, just like as you see it here. Just to give you an impression about what scope you can go with this game, because one might consider building an entire city out of grand buildings. That being said, of course, you can build everything more effective. You ha can have an entire city full of Dondorians and then you'll churn out cut stone like candy. It's all depending on how you build your city. A Cretonian city, as you see, though, is not good at churning out grand buildings. That's uh, really important to note. But here we have now a really huge um, step between us and the temples, I think. I have to postpone them a little bit because we're uh, just not getting there yet. So there is now also left on the table the barber, which is 2000 tech points, which we don't have right now. And as you see here, we're right now in the part of the, in the region of the game where expanding becomes more and more costly. We are right there again, pretty much borderline forced to expanding our food production one more time as if we don't we're not going to be able to feed even more people here we're going to cover irrigation systems also very soon as soon as i have finally wrapped my head around the canal system and the new version which i somehow always failed in the last <laughs> attempt so in case you are wondering i'm working on it promise we're just going to slap down a veg farm now 
and right there another orchard here as these are just real powerhouses in terms of production. We're going to delete the fishery now as it is just for us dead weight at this point. We're not producing enough fish to make it matter in the slightest way and it is just eating up room that we could use for another orchard so much better as this is super fertile soil and it will yield high rewards. The larger your city grows, the larger your expenses grow. This is something that I want to document with the series as good as I can because this is something I really adore about this game as it stays quite challenging. You can easily maneuver yourself again into Doom if you just don't do what I'm doing here, you know, pack up these uh, orchards as we need them, pack up another veg farm, and uh, it's it's really important that you always keep your keen eye out on the uh, ever needing, ever growing needs of your city, because otherwise your, your city can implode at many stages of the game. I love this about the game, by the way. This is, uh, it's a very soft core demand, it's easy to um, play your cards right, but it feels really very rewarding in, in, to put it into any perspective. So here we have a 90% fertility growth. This will be stupidly effective. All right. In the meantime, finally, the crypt will be constructed. It may be my wallet will be uh, not... Uh, that worried anymore. Wait a sec, I don't know that event yet. Alright, today I have saved a soul. I will take many souls before... okay. That is... <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Div. Okay, so... Uh, we have a murder in town. I don't know. If that, that's a new event, I... Never seen that legit before. Okay, that's uh, very disturbing and uh, distracting. Anyways, where was I? So, crypts. Due to the fact that we have now a crypt in, uh, in, in session, we will have a much higher fulfillment on the uh, Dondorian and human side. The Cretonians, well, they do enjoy it as well, but not as hard as the humans do. I don't know why these guys are not enjoying it yet. Probably the news hasn't spread yet that this place is already uh, in business now, but uh, sooner or later they will benefit from that building too. If not, I need more of them. But I could imagine that they're, they just haven't seen it yet because they're working somewhere else in your city. At the end of the day, the crypts here are for Cretonians not as important, but as you see here for humans and Dondorians, they are even much more powerful than a graveyard. So for this city, it's just a minor step forward. For many other cities, it can be really catapulting you straight into the into the uh, end of the mid game or through the mid game entirely, because you just can get yourself so many extra people out of that. So. Just wanted to show you this wonderful little building before we are moving on. So, the veg farm and the fruit farm are a... Uh, so, let's see. I don't know what the correct uh, course of action here is. <laughs> That's a nifty little easter egg that I didn't know yet. So, we're basically seeing a Jack the Ripper case in our own city. That's basically what it boils down to. In the meantime, our conscripts are training uh, their, themselves there. And we have now brought an innocent down, and our Cretonian population is not happy about it. So, well, alright, I didn't know about this event being a thing at all. It's quite a funny little thing. So what I want to point out here, too, is that these people, these 200 people, are not bound as permanent army or something like that. It's just 200 people that are doing their everyday jobs here as far as I understand it and can be mustered as soldiers. But if we'd be doing that, we'd be suddenly missing 200 workers. So 
just as a side note, if you wanted to mobilize these. I have to double check that though. Please correct me in the comment section if that's a wrong information, because I haven't um, tried that out yet, but uh, all that I see indicates that this is how it works right now. The system has been changed and changed and changed and changed again, so that's why you see me that insecure. And many of my old knowledge has been invalidated by these changes, and therefore, yeah, that's where we are at right now. So I'll be slapping down another lab over here, as we need more research points. And after we have brought up enough research points, it will be sometime soon in the future also be paying off to set up libraries, but that is just a... Uh, Bit of, a bit of a thing um, up on the horizon. So we have a lot of dead people. If that is happening here, it's really important that you take care of that you have enough graveyard power. So we might be actually well off in bringing up another graveyard in the, in the city here as well, just in case that something weird might happen. You never know. Alright, so we can now go for, well, I don't want to go for the grooming technology here at this point, so I'll be I'll be fast forwarding here a little bit the time until we have, or, well, we're going to go over the temples like that. So temples are stupidly costly, so I want to probably go over them uh, remotely here, as we're uh, probably, ah, well, we can build a temple of Krador. So the temples to the gods are the, um, high high value version of the of the shrines every one of them is different as you see here the temple of shmailor needs livestock cut stone and furniture a minion wants metal and cut stone crador wants cut stone and furniture and athuri is just the pickiest of them all demanding jewelry and cephalon which is just wow super amazingly costly so the point about uh, temple technology, though, is that when you are there to to fulfill that, it is a very, very, very powerful way to pull people into your city. As this is basically the the top notch religious technology in the game. You, there, there is nothing more powerful after that anymore, and it is just where where you pretty much have the best uh, religious buildings available and that's why it is also costly to to build that uh, to build some of the temples there personally think that the costs are right now a little bit heavy like super heavy but who am i to judge so we're going to cut down the gemstone imports now as it is so draining on my wallet right now and we need other things done first. So, oh yeah, I don't need to pause the videos to, uh, as we are right now easily getting the tech full. As you see here, spamming labs like that does cost you a lot of uh, workers, but it does pay off quite nicely. At the same time, our food clock is really, really running low these days, so we need to work on improving our income of food, but we are already producing extra buildings, so that is happening. At this point, I also want to mention that I don't think it is a smart choice to um, to rush the temples like I do here. I really do that just for the sake of tutorial. <laughs> so we're going to put the temple maybe up here. Let's see. And with temples, it is important to note that temples create costs that are permanent. So at the temple, goods are sacrificed to the uh, god in, in question. That means there will be a constant drain to these um, goods in your city. So we're going to set up a bit of a temple station. like That's somewhat symmetric. So you have Grandeur. That is uh, something that, well, as you see here, we cannot really, um, I think, yeah, we cannot really increase the grandeur of this place anymore by putting anything in it. Temples are very special in that regard, as we can only 
increase their power by making them even larger. So bigger is better when it comes to temples. This is not really a good temple. I just want to uh, point that out, but we're going to plaster it down at that point nevertheless, as it will be really, really powerful still. And it, well, it illustrates this episode's uh, goals quite well. There we go. And after that, we're uh, our, our economy should finally bounce back from all the heavy investments. I mean, you got to uh, respect also that we're currently investing fruit for the new orchard, so there's also a strain on these uh, on this income too. And we need to cut down on our workers for a couple of years on the orchard until that thing turns out food as well. So. There is still a lot of ground to get covered over the course of the years. The longer you play this game, the more your developments will will overspan longer and longer time frames, as you see here. Also, we need to double check, is this thing here still in the borders of our janitor? And the answer is no. So this is something you really just have to get into your into your instincts there's uh you know there there's always my janitor senses tingling <laughs> when i see things that are just too far off from the city the worst part about it is that uh, janitors are really work intense so there is also a tech for that there's always a tech for that and that's here uh maintenance that allows you to cut down your workforce in these regards if you'd wanted to. So I'm going to skip for today over the barber, as this is just another workshop that I can't really uh, sufficiently cover for now, as it needs tools. Hey, wait a sec, we got tools. Never mind, we're going to do this. I even have the tech points. So then we have all the finer things together in this game. So the barber is just yet another super high value service building with the twist that you have to invest tools there but at the same time it is just one of those service buildings that really has a lot of power and it is well if you have tools available it is actually the costiest part about it is the uh, tech investment in all honesty there we go so let's see what happened to my uh, temple project. Yeah, things are coming together slowly. Ah, wonderful. So happy that we got all the things in one episode. So now we have a lot of laboratories running too. So it would be paying off to just create one more lab probably and then uh, start upgrading or uh, research technologies too. But one thing at a time, I'd say. So, temple is being built here. Barber is being built here. Life's good. And life's going to get much better now as well. So, the um, veg farm is also coming along quite nicely. All right. There we go. So the temple is now completed and it requires a couple of people working there. And here's the sacrifices. So the temple sacrifices animals, livestock is needed. So at this point, we should try to lower our livestock exports as we're now not wanting to export that much of it anymore. We actually want to export livestock much more conservatively now as temples become much much more effective if they are actually providing something there as we see here we have now slowly climbing access to temples at the same time our cretonians grew quite unhappy with the decline of available services we were just putting up more and more workers and work spots and more and more demands while not providing many new accommodations and that is just what you get there as you see here happiness is pretty much at an all-time low 
We also have a lot of deranged people and Jake the Invincible stays on killing people, which is putting a, another dent into the happiness of the city. So all the extra services here are luckily providing a little bit of a mitigation here. All right, but at this point, there is really service-wise only the uh, Grand Arena left. And we can only go into the knowledge parts here. So at this point, you already know like 80 to 90 percent of all the things in the game to manage your your city's happiness and, and make it successful on on many different ends. So congratulations if you're with me at this point. You pretty much only have to go through the military and 4x aspect of the game now. But that's what we're going to do in the upcoming episodes, my good friends. I thank you for being around. I hope you have a good time and we're going to continue next time with more of the goodness here. Up until then, I... Hope you're going to leave me your comments down below if you have any questions or add-ons on the way. I'd really love to hear back from you. And as usual, consider leaving a thumbs up for the algorithm. And a subscription would be also very nice if you want to stay on track with all the stuff that I do here. Apart from that, check out the description box. You'll be finding plenty of nice links there leading to the entirety of this playlist here and also leading to Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me A Coffee. I'd be super delighted if you'd give those a look, and of course, consider... No, not that. <laughs> the... Yeah, you could check out my Discord. Ha, it wasn't a brain fart at all. You could go there and have a chat there if you'd like to, and thanks for watching this video up until this very moment. Deeply appreciate it, and yeah, I hope you have a good day. See you all next time when we're going to go over the military and conquest part of the game. See you there. Bye-bye.